In this recording, we're going to look at the July Mix Max and the Excel assignment for that. You are given a note of $45,000, and in option A, at 12% annually, you would have a monthly interest rate of 1%, and you had to calculate the payment. So entering that into your calculator and essentially Excel to solve for the payment of 1001 So you'll solve for the payment of 1001 each month. And then you're just doing a loan amortization schedule. If it's five years, that will be 60 months. So schedule out your 60 months and then figure out, you know, your interest payment uh, of 1001 uh, The interest expense is going to be, you know, 1% of your beginning notes payable. Uh, of the 1001 if 450 is for interest, then the remaining 551 is for principal. And so if we started with 45,000 of principal, we subtract 551 to get the ending. And once you actually have those formulas in there, you can just copy, 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 copy all the way down. So just click and copy all the way down. You can add up your interest expense versus your principal payment. If you add those up, they're going to, I didn't total this here, I see the total payments. Uh, but of the total payments, this is for interest, that is for principal. So pretty expensive, isn't it? 15000 out of 45000 for interest. Okay, and then in option B, we're going to keep it pretty much the same, except we're going to change the payment. Uh, and you do, no, you, you do not have to calculate. So no longer are you actually calculating your payment. You don't really need to do anything up here. Um, but we're going to have the same schedule, except 1001, you're told to use a payment of 726. Notice your interest expense is the first for the same year. It's 1% of your ending balance, or your beginning balance, excuse me. Uh, and then, you know, of the 726, if 450 is for interest, then, you know, how much is for principal? And then that principal payment reduces my note balance. But by the time you get to the very end, um, you know, the question is, if I don't have as large a payment, what's the ending balance? Am I going to have an ending balance? And yes, you should. You should at the very end. You're going to see that you end up with, uh, you know, you still have principal uh, to pay off on this loan. So, um, you know, uh, the interest expense actually went up. Uh, principal payments uh, went down because we don't have, you know, of the total payment, fewer dollars are being applied to principal. So more dollars are being applied to interest, so fewer dollars are being applied to principal, so we're going to have an ending balance. When you get to option C, again, you do not have to do the top part, uh, but the payment changes, so you're just going to type in 450 and copy that all the way down. Uh, notice that only covers the interest expense, so again, you need to have your formulas for all, all four columns all the way down, but we're going to see, you know, nothing happens to principal, we started out owing $45,000, you are going to end up owing $45,000, so no change. And then in option D, we have a very small payment. So this will be kind of interesting. If we only pay $174 and our interest cost is $450, well, we don't have a principal payment then. We actually are adding to our principal. So notice your loan is going to grow the last year, and you're actually going to end up with roughly $67,000 dollars of debt at the end. Uh, again, the, you know, because the balance grew because there wasn't enough, the payment wasn't enough to cover uh, the interest cost, so they had to keep borrowing. So anyhow, I want you to put that on a spreadsheet and figure that out how to do that, and wanted you to really think about what do the numbers mean.